911, what's the nature of your emergency? Welcome back to the Tactical Living Podcast. I'm your host, Ashley Bolton, joined by Detective Bolton. Clint, how are you? I'm good. I've titled today's episode, Staying in Your Lane, A Roadmap to Mental Clarity. So just sit back, relax, and enjoy today's content. Now, as I'm going throughout my day and my week, usually I'll sit down and when something is seems like it would be a good podca- podcast topic, then I will put a little note in my phone. And so I started to think about how Everybody is so self-consumed with problems that belong to other people that it usually leads them to live very chaotic, unhealthy, and uncomfortable lives. And that's what I thought we could talk about today because, Clint, we recently had this like aha moment in our lives, probably about a year ago now, Mm -hmm. where we started to realize the reason that our dynamics in our marriage and as it pertains to your career are so unique is because we don't take ownership of other people's problems. Yeah. It's, it's that, that realization that we had was because it's been that question that's bothered us for a long time and not necessarily bothered us, but it's always been like, how come we're different compared to other people and so many others out there when it comes to dealing with traumatic incidents or just life in general and, and having that realization that it's not about us was kind of that that aha moment that we had and and it's really interesting when you start diving into that topic more and more because if if it's really if you you look at any incident whether it's a traumatic incident for a, a shooting a stabbing a traffic collision a loss of a family member whatever it may be is it's not really about you. And and that that was that epiphany moment that we had. And it's really interesting to really break that down for ourselves. And it's so hard for people, people in general, and, and I see this all the time, they have to use other people's emotions. And it's almost like, I don't know if it's someone hiding behind someone else's else's emotions to not deal with something or someone else's story to get that attention to say like look at me and and it's it's really interesting because there's so many different paths that we can talk about when it comes to that and we are very fortunate to where we just say it's not about us and we don't let ourselves get enveloped into other people's stories because it's not us. Yeah. Talking about it from either a trauma response or discussing it from the aspect of mental health. I think a lot of people do want to be involved in some way. And when there's an incident or something that takes place or maybe something that is not agreeable, then it becomes a opportunity for you to somehow be involved. And I think that's where a lot of it stems from. And we don't realize how detrimental this could be to our mental health. And I'm thinking about if, you know, we can use New York as an example. And I'm talking the New York when it was clean and classy, not the current day New York. And the picture we usually see in our mind is the sidewalks that are filled with people that are walking to and from. So imagine for a second that you were in the midst of that, right? You're in the very, very center. And as you're walking and people are walking towards you and people are walking in the same direction as you, you decide that you're going to take one little item from every single one of those people and you're going to put it inside of a bag. You're carrying a a big bag, the kind that you would take to the beach. And maybe some guy gives you his business card, so you put it in there. And a girl gives you a lipstick out of her purse, so you put that in there. One unique item from every single person, everybody that you see in your sphere of influence. And you're doing that constantly. All day long, you're just walking down that street. It's the same with our lives, right? Whether we're seeing something on the television, on social media, the grocery store. Pretend that these people are the same equivalent of those interactions that we have every day. And we're just taking, putting it, storing it in our bag, storing it in our bag. And we're doing that day in and day out. Well, eventually, it's going to become so much baggage for us to be carrying every single day. And you might look inside of that bag one day and realize, like, this is all junk. Like, this isn't mine. Why am I carrying this? You know, and that's such a great analogy with it, because we carry 
as human beings, we carry so many people's baggage and there's really no need to it. There's no reason why we should be carrying everybody else's baggage. You have your own baggage. Like everybody has their own baggage. So why are you carrying someone else's? Because it's easier to deal with theirs than it is your own. Yeah. And when we think about the other side of that, that analogy, that lipstick is meaningful to that female that, that you took it from, right? It's the perfect color for her. She might have spent a lot of money. She wears it to special events. That business card from that gentleman, it's important to him, right? Maybe he started that business. Maybe it was his father's business. But that's not your story. That has nothing to do with you. Exactly. It's very... I and I and I look at this from the law enforcement perspective and and there's I can go through incident after incident as people sharing other people's stories for their own experience when really it has nothing to do with them. There are times where it is your story and and don't get me wrong like say you're involved in an officer involved shoot, shooting and you're the officer who who had to pull the trigger in that instance, that's your story. But within that same sphere, how many people are saying, oh, I was there. That was so, it was hard. It was hard to deal with. And yeah, I'm absolutely, I can see that. But at the same time, who did it really affect? The person who pulled the trigger and the person who got shot. And, and then it kind of is a ripple effect from there. You know, we're not parents, but I'm thinking about the as a coach, that's always what I'm thinking about is what the kickback will be, what the excuses are, why people can't. And one thing that's come, I, I'm not, I'm not picking on your mom, but she's like pinging on my brain right now because I'm hearing her as a mother talk about all the reasons why her kids' problems are her problems. And it's, it's incorrect, right? It's exhausting actually to live our lives in that way. And it's so important for us to stay in our own lane, not only that, but to also understand that it does not make us selfish to do that. And in fact, it's making us able to better show up as the person that we want to be for the person whose problems we're taking on. And what I mean by that is it's an act of self-preservation for us to make sure that we're discovering this new shift in perspective. And it's going to ultimately lead to a clearer mind and greater emotional stability, which is what we would want to give to the person whose problems we're taking on as our own. You know, and it really, my mom and I just had a conversation and it's funny that you bring her up with it because it's that same, she, she recognizes a problem. She gets emotionally invested into something and then she wants to figure out why, why, and she doesn't want to be, but she doesn't know how. And I said, well, stop, stop feeding into it. And she's like, I don't know how to. Like, it's always those reasons as to how not to feed into a problem. And, but she feeds off of that in, in a negative and a positive way. And so many, she can't make that determination for herself because she chooses not to. It's a choice. Yeah. And as somebody who has studied trauma recovery, the why is not as important as it feels like it is. And that's always the first question for us. Like, why did my body respond this way? Or why am I reacting this way? And that's because we think that we need to dig back into the past in order to understand why this is feeling this way now or why we're reacting this way. We will almost never find the answer to that question. If we do, it will usually happen when it's just like how you and I have spent, you know, now together almost 16 years mm -hmm. finding the answer to, to that question for ourselves. And the, the most important part is for us to just focus on now. So how am I feeling right now? How am I reacting right now? How do I want to feel right now? What will help me to navigate towards how I want to feel right now? Those are the questions that we need to be asking when we find ourselves in a state of mind like that, instead of trying to ruminate on the, the puzzle that will never be solved, that will lead us to the answer of like, why am I this way, right? Mm -hmm. It's so... Interesting when you have that mind shift for yourself because you're not sitting and ruminating on something that is not even about you. And, and you're not, it's, and I use this example all the time. It's like drinking poison, hope, poison, hoping somebody else gets sick. And I, and I love that saying because we do that on a daily basis. 
as human beings and and would you literally drink a a vial of poison hoping somebody else gets sick because of that negative influence or would you carry that big bag of of other people's belongings around all the time just because you want to be involved yeah absolutely and we're all guilty of it so if you've gotten some value out of today's episode if you have do us a favor drop a review subscribe down below and as always know that i'm sending you a long tight hug from my home to yours